Hello Internet, my name is Aaron Garcia, and today I have the Honda Moto Compacto. Everyone's talking about it, everyone wants to try it out. I just got this at my local Honda dealership, Hill Country Honda, and uh, I'm really excited to open it. Uh, they're coming in a very limited supply right now. Not everyone can get their hands on one, but somehow I managed to get one, and I'm very, very excited about it. Um, so we're going to open it. It comes in this brown box from Honda, just like this, and you'll have a Honda part number. Uh, as you can see, it's got uh, some different symbols on it that represent that it has a battery and that you should be careful with it, uh, that it's fragile and that this direction should go up. So I have this uh, box here, and you see it has my name on it too, it's kind of cool. Uh, and we're just going to open it up and see it for the first time, see what it's all about. I hear that everyone's really excited about these, and uh, we're gonna open the box here. All right, let's see. And they really taped it good. They didn't want anybody like messing up the pacto here. All right, just open this a little bit. There we go. Huh. Box is very interesting. Oh, I see. Okay. There. All right. Cool. Okay, so I'm really excited to open this box. It looks really, really good. I've seen a model on the showroom floor uh, in person. Uh, it's very, very nice. And I think Honda is really trying to open up into a new market. Uh, this scooter thing is really different and really interesting, but as some of you know, Honda did make a gas-powered version, I believe in the 70s or 80s, somewhere in there, you know, some time ago. And it was very popular in Japan, but it just did take off. But I think this is gonna be a hit. Uh, from everything I know about it, it looks really good. And it's also really heavy, but not quite as heavy as the old uh, version. We're gonna take some liberties here to get this out of here. And the reason we're showing you the unboxing part is one, it's fun. And two, uh, so you know what to expect when you buy one. It's heavy, so please expect that. Uh, and this is the beautiful box. We're going to show you the, the beautiful box packaging here. Uh, it says Honda in red. Now, special note, Honda does not allow you to advertise in all caps. This is the only time you will ever see Honda written in all caps. And I know this because I do marketing with Honda. And um, you cannot have uh, Honda in all caps. This is the only time you'll ever see that. So very interesting, red Honda. Another fun fact for you, if you're in the United States, Honda's color is not blue, it's actually red. For whatever reason, North America is the only part that Honda has blue. So if you look at Canada and you look at the Honda dealership in Canada, you'll see that the dealership is actually red. That's also a fun fact for you. Now, uh, what I really like about this box, it reminds me like a MacBook Pro or an iMac, because this is more like an iMac size but it's heavier than both of those. Uh, also, you don't open the box from the top, you actually open it from the bottom. And uh, it says in real fine, uh, transparent, you can't even see it on camera, I don't think if you do it in an angle. It actually says Moto Compacto on this side here, an uh, invisible font. It's really nice. Uh, they've thought about every little detail on this box. I'm gonna open it on the back here. And to open it on the back, you will need to one, lift it. Oh my goodness. And you have these three tabs. One, two, three. And it opens like this. So if you get one of these and you're wondering, that's how you open it. And now for the reveal. I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna turn this over so you can see it. And there it is. The Honda logo in red, as I said earlier, Honda's true color is not blue, it's red. And here is the beautiful uh, Moto Compacto. It's plastic, white, it's like a blank canvas, and it's very well packaged. It looks like a MacBook Pro. I mean, I, if I had to compare it to something, the packaging looks really, really nice. Um, the charging equipment is all in this nice little box, very Apple-esque but I'm not gonna keep making references to Apple. Honda is doing its own thing and we gotta recognize it for its own uh, branding. But it, you know, it's a nice experience. I, if I had to compare it to uh, Puma maybe with the red, 
I mean, it looks really nice, but Puma does it on the outside generally. Uh, but I just, I love this experience. And I really look forward to what Honda is gonna do in this new space because it's getting me excited about the brand. And if you saw videos of my coworkers uh, riding around in these earlier, they were having a great time. Everybody wanted to see it. Uh, we had customers coming in to buy a new Honda and they saw it on the showroom floor and they're like, what is this? This is cool. And you know, I think it's gonna do really well. Um, and I think it's gonna be a real big hit. Here is uh, the packing materials. You get a Honda manual, also in red which is a really nice color, really appropriate for Christmas. Um, and it's in English and it tells you everything you need to know. Something I want to point out to those who buy one of these. On page 18, uh, you do need to pay attention to the fact that you should charge this uh, Moto Compacto before writing it. It comes partially charged and I know the first instinct you're going to have is to write it, but you should actually charge it first. Uh, so that the battery life is extended. And it's gonna be important as you wanna ride it for a good distance. So uh, I did read that part. I probably should read the other parts of it. And we might actually do that here. Uh, one of the biggest issues people have been having was pulling out the back wheel. So we're gonna find out how that goes for me because I haven't done it yet. And in this package here with bubble wrap, it comes with a tool of these like, I'm not sure these are. They're not pentagons, they're, I think they're hexagons. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Like hexagon shapes. And I guess it's somewhere on this bike, I guess to loosen things. And then you get this uh, document that on the front is in Japanese, presumably. And I will translate this for you if I could, but I can't. So uh, we're gonna turn on the other side and you see it's in English, so very nice. And here it says important safety information, um, avoid extremely hot or cold conditions, uh, do not charge uh, dusty or dirty, very humid, vibrating, strong uh, metallic fields, don't get it in, uh, in the sand, it says avoid sandy conditions or exposed to direct sunlight. So basically don't take this to the beach is what I'm getting from it. Or don't go in the sand with it. So we're not gonna do that. Good thing I'm very far from a beach. All right, here is the charger. And it's in the same shape as the Moto Compacto a little bit. It's in a nice shape. You can see you can wrap the cable around it. I, I always have to give it a sniff to see how it has a scent to it. But uh, I think Sense Marketing is officially dead. I have not seen any packaging since 2009 with Sense Marketing. Uh, Apple used to use uh, vanilla scent. And uh, I haven't seen it used since. I don't think, it, I don't think they think it works anymore. Yeah, but look at this charger. It's really nice. It has Honda on the back. Oh man, it's just so beautiful. I mean, they're doing a really good job on this. I'm very positive about this product. I just think they're doing a great job with it. You know, everything I can see, spot on. And I'm, I'm really proud of them. Well, let's take this thing out of the box. This is gonna be interesting. Uh, it is a little hefty. So, let's do that. All right, there it is. And the first thing you're going to notice is that, yes, indeed, it does match the Honda Compacto, the charging. That's a very nice touch. Also, it's like a suitcase. This uh, unit is very much like a suitcase. And you see it's got its two tires here, and one pops out, the one in the back, and the one in the front does the turning for you. And everything else, like the seat and the handlebars, are all stored within the sleeve of the, the machine here, which is really nice. So we're gonna try to open this up for you. We're actually gonna take it out of the box. Probably a good idea. All right, here it is. Out of the box. We're gonna save this box. I have a feeling that this box is gonna be a collector's item someday in the future, so I don't I'll use it too much. Um, and here is the wheel release in the back. So you'll see that this will release the wheel somehow, once I understand how to do that. A lot of people have been having some issues opening and closing it, so we're gonna mess with that in a minute. And we're gonna also discuss how to not do that. Okay, so we're gonna press down on this push to release button. And it's not because I know that I'm supposed to do that, I'm doing it because it just seems like the most instinctual thing to do. And 
and uh, I might be wrong about that. Hold on. So, I think there are all kinds of release buttons, and I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing, which is typical. There we go. So, we're gonna learn together, folks. All right, so these are the handles. It's wrapped in plastic. Okay, so I got it up. We're gonna figure this out. I think it is, yeah, this is very interesting. Okay, so, so oh, here we go. Oops, if you notice the handles. All right, so on the side here, you'll notice this other side. Oh, roll this back for you. There is like a, almost like a bike seat lever if I could describe it as something. And that's what's gonna let me lift the handlebars up. And then we're gonna just close it. There we go. That made more sense to me. And now we're gonna just turn this thing. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna do that, but I think it's a little, it's this little latch here. This is new territory, guys, so we're gonna figure this out. So I've seen someone assemble it, which was good, because you kinda know what I'm in for, but I'm not, 100% on it yet. Yeah. Okay. Wow, it's almost good. Oh, learn something new every day, guys. Press on this button here. So I'm gonna have you zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Uh, this might be helpful if you're assembling it. You're gonna push down on this, like so. And it's gonna loosen it up. And now I can, and you see it kind of swivels on this little te tooth thing. And we're just gonna put it in place and now I can Hold it there. Now the handles, as you notice, are not engaged. We're gonna figure that out here in a second. And I think it has something to do with this handle down here, which, oh, okay. So there is a little red handle here that you can see. And uh, this is what causes it to lock in place. We'll show that one more time. Hopefully I do it right this time. See, this causes it to go in like that. And now I put it here and now it locks it in place. So hopefully that helps you guys at home. Now, you have to sit somewhere, right? So here's the seat. And the seat, just like that. Hey, that was almost effortless, but notice it's not locked. Well, maybe it's, it is locked in place, but there's a little, I know there's a little thing where I can push on it. Oh yes, you push this up, it locks in place, push it down, now the seat is in place. And then you'll notice that there's a hole here on this side, and that hole corresponds with the whole the little clasp that's in here. I don't know what to call that, but we're just gonna call it something. And you push it in place. So that wasn't too bad. Look at that. And it already turns. Very nice. That's how you turn it. And you can turn it a little bit. It won't go all the way, but it'll go that way. Now, you might be tempted to go ride it like this, but this is not how you're supposed to ride it. You need to pull out the back tire. And uh, a lot of folks have been having issues with this that I've seen so far. So I'm gonna see if I can do it. It says it's in the lock position and we're gonna turn it to the unlock position. So I believe you turn it, something like that. And then there's this like thing you push up on, hopefully. Okay, yeah, clearly I don't know what I'm doing. But it's okay, this is how we learn, guys. I'm trying things new. Or you could read the manual. That would probably be good too. I've unlocked it, and there's like this thing in the back that you can show up on. Okay, you've been reading the manual, guys. You've never seen me read the manual, typically, but we're going to do it. And there's also a little kickstand on the other side of this device, so we're going to just do that. Very nice. You'll see that there's a place for your feet, also here. We'll figure that out in a minute. Okay, so page one, registration. It's interesting. Rider scooter safety, number two. Always be safe, guys. Gotta recommend you being safe. Number three, it tells you what everything's called. That's very helpful. Uh, can you tell me how to remove the seat of the tire? So you can see how the back tire is supposed to come out here. And it's because you pull this little lever thing out. But a lot of folks have been having some issues with it, so we're gonna figure it out. And if you're at home struggling with it, I don't blame you, because I've, I've seen things. This should not discourage you from getting it though. We'll all figure it out. Here we go. Here is the part where you pull it out. So you push up and you pull out after you've pulled out and turned this thing. So we've 
pull it out and turn it. Oh, okay, I'll go get something else. Okay. It says push up and pull, but I don't know how to push up and pull apparently. Okay. So, ah, okay. So this thing turns like this, which is what the diagram shows you. And clearly I am still struggling to, and there you are. And I locked it in place. I don't know if that was straightforward or not, but you can now see that if you pull up on this thing, it locks in place over here. We're gonna turn this back somehow, hopefully, maybe. This is oh, where's the nerving, nerve wracking part. This is the part that people were having issues with locking back in place. Okay, I'm not quite doing that, right? So, more manual time. So it says, I'm going to rotate it and push, well, okay, push, yeah. We are uh, on the same boat, guys. Hold that thought. We got the wheel out. And by the way, once I pull, set this up, I'm probably gonna leave it this way if I were honest. So it seems like it turns, and we're starting to rub into things, which is not good. So it's to, I think this wheel is the way it should be. Not too far out, which is good. Can I make a new clip? Okay, I figured it out. After some fumbling around with this and looking at the manual more closely, you'll see that it tells you to pull the wheel out, step one, pay attention to that number, you pull this open, right? So we'll just pull it open just to show you where we were at. And then it, it says to pull it to this position right here. Push this up, pull the wheel out, right? So we're gonna put the wheel back like so. This is where it was at, right? So you pull it out, push this up, and pull the wheel out, okay? And I noticed that it, I, last time I pulled it out way too far, it seemed like, and I also turned this, and I wasn't supposed to really turn this. Now that I've done this, I can push it back easily. So don't start, you know, turning in all weird directions, because now you're gonna have all kinds of problems, but if you do get stuck with it pulled out, and this thing is turned over here, put the wheel back, the way you had it and it should, should resolve itself. So that is the solution to the wheel lock, a wheel release not uh, closing properly. So now that we figured all that out, we are done. Um, that was it. That was the big headache that everyone had. Oh, actually, hold on. Hold that thought. We need one of these, which again, with the instructions. Okay, that one pulled out just fine. Okay, and that one pulled out. Cool. So now you get this little Feet rests, I don't know to call them, I guess the chief of the manual will tell you the right things, right? Um, so we're gonna look at that manual here. And foot pegs is what they call them, foot pegs. So you just learned a new word. You are now a doctorate. You learned the new word, foot pegs. Um, foot pegs, okay. And the final piece of this is you cannot ride this thing until you charge it. I'm sorry, I know you wanna go ride it, and you could technically ride it which you're not supposed to because page 18 tells us not to do that. And we want you to get the most life out of your new Moto Compacto as possible. So I'm not gonna encourage you to go out there and burn the battery. Instead, we're gonna do the responsible thing and we're gonna charge it. And then we're gonna find out how long it takes to charge. I don't know if the manual actually says how long that's gonna be, but uh, we're gonna find out what that's like. Now, this uh, beautiful piece of Honda engineering, uh, is capable of reaching speeds of 15 miles per hour uh, for 12 miles. So I don't know if you're gonna be driving 15 miles that whole time, but at uh, 15 miles per hour, but you will be able to go 12 miles. So that means go six miles one way and six miles back. That way you're not stranded somewhere or just charge it when you get there. Uh, just gotta know how long you're gonna be there. So some something to note, as you can see, it is a beautiful, Piece of Honda engineering. It comes in these leather handlebars. They're stitched. I like that touch. This is where you, you know, turn on the throttle and just you know, go. It's electric. Little bell. Nice little bell. And brake. Note the brake because you're going to need to stop. And your foot pegs and your kickstand. Your kickstand's right there. So we're going to charge this uh, Moto Compacto. And the charge port is in the front, which is very interesting. I guess it kind of goes with all EVs. 
and you just plug in this circular charging port, which is rather large, and uh, plug it in the front. You also notice you get a light in the front, which is nice, and you get a red light in the back. And then you just plug this in and charge it. And as much as I want to ride it, we need to charge it first, and then we get to ride it. So, in the next video, I will show you how, how, how it performs. We're gonna go out and see, go 15 miles per hour. We're gonna go through the two different stages. There's a one, uh, first stage, which is slower, and there's a, a second stage, which is a little faster, and I believe it adds three miles per hour to the speed, top speed, and it's gonna be really fun. So, and it's really nice. I, my first impressions of it is that it's really, really nice, but we're gonna to have to ride it, of course. So, stay tuned, like, subscribe, and comment, uh, and we're gonna ride this Moto Compacto and see what it's like on the road. Until next time, thanks for watching.